afternoon and evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Stamp Talk presented by the Royal Philatelic Society of Canada. Our presenter tonight is Dr. David Foote. David was born in England, raised in Australia, and he did his graduate studies in the United States and is now a retired professor of economics at the University of Toronto. He has collected stamps since the age of six and has collected uh, has collections of several Pacific Islands and of Western Australia. He served on Canada Post's Stamp Advisory Committee from 2012 to 2018. In another hobby, very interesting one, might I add, David has traveled to 24 solar eclipses from Mongolia to Antarctica, and I am very jealous. Tonight, he combines his interests to give us a talk on eclipse philately. Before we begin, though, we would like to thank Longley Auctions, our sponsor for Stamp Talks and Stamp Panels. Longley Auctions is a public auction firm specializing in selling Canadian material, particularly postal history, but also large worldwide collections, stamps, postal history, postcards, and philatelic literature. So be sure to check out longleyauctions.com. And now we will have our land acknowledgement. Like many other organizations in Canada, the Board of Directors of the Royal Philatelic Society of Canada has chosen to acknowledge Indigenous peoples in Canada with the following statement. As a step towards reconciliation, the RPSC acknowledges that our national office in Toronto stands on the traditional territory of many First Nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. Our national office is also covered by Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaties. Furthermore, we acknowledge that Indigenous peoples did not give up the lands that they had been on for thousands of years that now constitute Canada. We also acknowledge that Europeans did not discover Canada or arrive on an uninhabited land. The RPSC acknowledges that Canada is covered by many treaties and modern lands, resources, and self-government agreements with Indigenous peoples, and that the provisions of many of these arrangements remain unfulfilled. The RPSC further acknowledges that many Indigenous peoples in Canada have not had their rights fully recognized and implemented according to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The RPSC pledges to promote recognition and knowledge of Indigenous peoples in Canada and elsewhere and their cultures through philately. We will also work towards building positive relationships with Indigenous peoples in Canada. Thanks, Greg. And now, without any further ado, take it away, David. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening uh, for the uh, presentation on Eclipse Philately. Uh, uh, prelude, if you like, to the real thing that's coming up on uh, 8th of April. Now, I start with this particular stamp because it is the first stamp to show a total eclipse of the sun. Uh, issued by Mexico in 1942, was part of a set of stamps uh, commemorating an astrophysics conference or congress and the inauguration of the, the observatory. Um, the stamps were uh, issued in February 17th, uh, 1942, and you can find them on cover. This is a domestic cover, uh, and this is a cover to the U.S. Uh, with a pair of the eclipse stamps. So this was the first uh, solar eclipse stamp uh, uh, issued, and I'm only going to talk about solar eclipses uh, tonight, uh, not lunar eclipses, although they may sneak in it somewhere along the line. So what are we going to cover? Well, I'm going to quickly try and give you some eclipse information, very quickly, the geometry of eclipses. I'm going to look at some eclipse postmarks, particularly the earlier ones, uh, comment on some eclipse expeditions, and then uh, review eclipse stamps and covers. And there's a gray area between all of these different um, uh, topics, uh, so they'll just flow from one to the next. So let's start with the geometry. What is a solar eclipse? Well, it's when the moon gets between the sun and the earth and casts a shadow on the earth. And there are ways to look at this that are very important. The moon, the moon rotates around the earth in an elliptical orbit or an oval orbit. So sometimes the moon's a little closer to the earth and therefore appears a little bigger. And in those cases, you get a shadow hitting the earth. And that's the, the 
point of totality. Other times the uh, moon is a little bit further away and it doesn't completely cover the room. So you don't get a total eclipse. Uh, you get a ring of fire, a ring of fire, and I will come back and show that uh, philately in a minute. Now, this would happen every month, except that the uh, moon's orbit is tilted relative to the Earth's. And so a lot of the shadows miss the Earth in many months. So you only get an eclipse uh, periodically. And that eclipse path follows the moon's path as it zips around the Earth and creates a narrow path of totality from west to east um on on the earth it can be short it can be long uh it'll have the maximum of totality about halfway along the path where the curvature of the earth is the closest um uh, to the moon so that's the basic um, geometry there's more to it than that but that'll do for our purposes i think so let's have a quick look at the geometry on cover so here we have uh the moon kentucky uh canceled between the sun, Mississippi, and Earth, Texas. And somebody went to a lot of trouble in 1932 to create this cover. They even missed the fact that 1932 is upside down here, but that's a nice little variety. Uh, joke, joke. Uh, I love the fact that it's canceled August 31st, 1932, which turns out to be an eclipse day in the US. And we'll come back and show that a little bit later on. Eclipse Virginia, actually, the post office went out of business in 1972. So this is not an easy uh, cancel to get. Um, this was a lovely cover that I found, and I love the address here. It's Chicago, Illinois, Earth. And I thought that's uh, very appropriate. So here are the solar eclipse paths from the first 25 uh, years of this century. Um, uh, don't get confused by the fact they look bigger at the poles. That's just simply the Mercator projection flattening out the Earth. And here's our eclipse path that's coming up on April the 8th, uh, 2024, going up through the US and through Canada and out through Bonavesta, Newfoundland. The center point of the eclipse path is down in Mexico. Uh, so uh, that's where maximum totality will be. Uh, in Mexico, and it gradually gets shorter and shorter as you move out uh, through Canada. But again, we'll come back and touch on that a little later on. But as you can see, there are quite a few paths here. Um, so the eclipses occur about two every three years. But again, let me support that with, uh, um, uh, with some data. So here's the eclipse paths has shown on caches and stamps, uh, for example. This is the 1963 uh, path of totality on a Canadian cover. Um, this is uh, a U-shaped path on uh, a TSS, a, a ship, the Fairwind, cruising in the Pacific, especially to see that eclipse actually in 1977. So this is U-shaped. Uh, in 1983, this is an inverted U-shaped um, uh, eclipse path shown on the cachet of the Indonesian uh, stamp. And eclipse cast can be shown in map form, either like this in the Mongolia 1997 stamp, or as a line, as in the 1990, uh, uh, no, the 2001 stamp from Zimbabwe. Moving forward, as I suggested, there are different types of eclipses, and we'll talk about the three eclipses represented in this Australian set from last year. Um, partial eclipses, total eclipses, and annular eclipses. Now, partial eclipses are when you're on the side and you can it's partly eclipsed, but you can still see part of the sun. So you'll get to see an eclipse, but it's not a total eclipse. An annular eclipse is where the moon is a bit further away from the Earth and the point of totality stops just above the Earth's surface. And so you do not have a line of totality on the Earth. Uh, you get what's called a ring of fire eclipse, where you can see the sun around the outside. Uh, this cover in the top right here is an annular eclipse cover from Turkey, 1976, and nicely shows the fact that that point of totality does not hit the Earth. Below, we've got the last two centuries of eclipses, and you can see that uh, total solar eclipses, 63 between 1801 and 1900, and 71 between 1901 and 2000, so roughly 60 
something a year, let's say 66 a year, that would be um, 200 every 300 years or two every three years. And so total solar eclipses occur roughly two every three years. But you may get annular eclipses and occasionally there's something called a hybrid eclipse, very quite rare. As you can see, only 15 in the 1800s and only six in the 1900s. Um, the hybrid eclipse is one that starts off as an annular uh, and then as you get to the curvature of the Earth and the point of maximum totality, it can turn into a total eclipse very briefly and then go out of a total eclipse back to an annular. But hybrid eclipses are quite rare. Um, so eclipses occur roughly two out of every three years and we know that from an even bigger study than just two centuries uh, because we have a five millennium catalog of solar eclipses from 1999 BC to 300 AD. And you can see around 3000 eclipses over 5,000 5, years is 6,000 uh, over 10, 10 years, or roughly, again, two every three years. Um, if you add in annular, of course, you might well uh, uh, increase that su substantially. Uh, but annular eclipses are usually on very narrow eclipse paths and often very hard uh, to see. So this five millennium catalog has been very helpful because, in fact, uh, it it shows that um, some 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 events in history can now be very clearly dated from eclipses. Um, apparently, the Lydians and the Medes were at war in uh, 585 BC. And um, uh, Herodotus uh, reports that Thales of, of Miletus knew about this. And the eclipse occurred as they were in the middle of about a three-year war, I think it was, uh, or what looked like the middle of a three-year war. And of course, in those times, and even up to today, uh, eclipses are believed to express the wrath of the, wrath of the gods. So the gods were unhappy about the war was the way it was interpreted, and therefore it, the war immediately stopped. And uh, so that's 585 BC. Now, the Babylonians, this tablet that the Babylonians uh, uh, had eclipse, uh, recorded the eclipse in 1375 BC. Um, and so again, that helps date, adds to archaeological evidence. Um, the Chinese records go back uh, to 720 BC, uh, but there is also a record that, in fact, two Chinese uh, were beheaded because they failed to predict an eclipse in 2134 BC and therefore uh, exposed the emperor to, to bad things. The Bible even mentions uh, 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 events that can be linked to eclipses with archaeological evidence. And um, in Second Kings, there's a, a line that now, when combined with the Assyrian sources, date that particular event to 763 BC, June the 15th. So we can look back into history uh, through the lens of eclipses and date some historical um, events. Moving on, um, this is what we go to see. It's totality. And um, the sun here is completely covered by the, um, the moon. And all we get to see are the streamers around the outside, uh, known in uh, scientific circles as the corona. And there was a big debate whether that was that those streamers were a part of the, the sun or part of the moon. And in the 1800s, and of course, uh, they were quickly... So there was a lot of interest in the uh, chemical composition of the streamers. I left this in black and white because attached to this are two lovely black and white postcards um, uh, from the eclipse. It was a hybrid eclipse of the 17th of April, 1912. Uh, and in Paris, they got two seconds of totality. Um, but there's a lovely set of uh, postcards, black and white postcards. Um, so you can augment your eclipse volatility with some very nice uh, um, picture postcards. It's a, but Let's move on and say, why do we go to an eclipse? Not only to see totality, of course, which you can see up here in uh, this uh, lovely uh, tie stamp. But first of all, the uh, effect of the moon gradually coming in and eating out pieces of the sun as the over the hour and a half before totality, roughly, um, is worth watching. And 
builds the suspense for final totality. And then gradually as the moon moves away, uh, it gra the sun gradually uh, reappears. And so that process of over the, about three minutes, this is a postcard from January the 20, 1925 eclipse, uh, which went over New York City. Um, uh, that process is something that's really enjoyable about eclipses. It builds up gradually, and then you've got a good hour and a half to celebrate afterwards, providing the clouds don't get you. Um, so there are specific things. Just as we are entering before totality, Bailey's beads are little, little um, visions of sunlight, the last little bits of sunlight that are going through the, the mountains on the moon. And uh, Bailey identified this back in 1836 as something to look for. And then the last little bit of sunlight actually bursts out like, like a diamond ring. And so this diamond ring just before totality, and in fact, just after totality, as shown on this postcard, uh, is something that is really, really neat to see. Uh, also, uh, the corona has all these streamers, and these are obviously a, a, a depiction, uh, a, not a photograph or anything. And uh, the, also, we might see prominences, and these are these fires of, of, uh, of uh, light that come out from, from the sun. And in fact, if I go back just to the previous slide, you can see a beautiful big prominence right up here in, around 11 o'clock on, on the sun. So there are lots of things to see. I can't illustrate something called shadow bands, which are the rippling of the atmosphere that occurs just before totality and just after totality. Um, but these are the things that the eclipse chasers go to see, and you can illustrate them on most of the stamps. Like you can't illustrate shadow bands. We can't even photograph shadow bands, uh, but they're very real, and I've experienced them many times. These two stamps on the right, by the way, are imperforated ones from the International Year of the Quiet Sun. Moving forward, some unusual observations of an eclipse. Well, the prototype of the Concorde um, back in 1973, they drilled holes in the roof of it and flew along the uh, uh, eclipse path. And so scientists could look up through the roof of the Concorde and they stretched out seven minutes of totality uh, to over 74 minutes of totality. And that was really pretty cool. Um, in, in, from Gemini 12 over South America, they photographed the eclipse below. And uh, rockets have often been used to take uh, observations of the, um, of the contents of the, uh, uh, of the, of the sun's um, spectroscopy uh, to work out uh, what it's all made of. So rockets were often used to, for scientific measurements, both in heat and uh, light and chemical composition. So these are three interesting and unusual observations of eclipses. Now I didn't mention that when I looked at eclipses, the maximum time for an eclipse is, is usually is seven and a half minutes. You can't get anything longer than seven and a half minutes, but eclipse chasers are happy with anything over, over half a minute even. And so different eclipses have different lengths of totality. So let's start with some post, pictorial postmarks. So on the right here, at the center here, we have a 1954 Swedish postmark showing the eclipse path going over Norway and Sweden. And this was the town of John Koping. And I tried to collect, uh, uh, I knew there were four of these arts and I was trying to collect all four and I did manage to get all four. And then I found four little covers where you could fit all four covers on a page in your collection. And I was very proud of myself to have the four towns uh, il illustrated here in on the right for this eclipse and say and I thought this was the first pictorial postmark of an eclipse but two things happened first of all this card on the left shows up from Matisse Ontario also from June the 30th 1954 now these these um, uh, eclipses were uh, about two and a half minutes so they weren't terribly long but you know Sweden and Ontario, long way apart. So you'd need to go to a map. And here, uh, borrowed from timeanddate.com, as all these maps will be, and I think uh, and acknowledge the, their contribution. You can see the eclipse path went, started in North America, went over the top of the Atlantic and came down to, through Sweden. 
So you can observe the eclipse through Sweden and the same eclipse at uh, Ontario, um, in Ontario. So these eclipse paths are very important to show you where, in fact, uh, people might be observing eclipses. I particularly love this uh, little thing, a note from your eclipse uh, e expedition uh, to keep informed about our progress. But I like this, the weather is hot and the bugs are hot. I thought that summarized uh, Northern Ontario. Anyway, that was the first thing that happened. This card came along. The second thing that happened is this cancel suddenly showed up. And I'm saying, well, wait a minute, it's got an illustration of a, of an eclipse up here. It looks like a, an annular eclipse, a ring of fire eclipse, but it also identifies four towns. And I've identified those four towns out to the right here for you. It's a Japanese uh, uh, eclipse cancel. It looks like 1911, but you have to remember that, in fact, they dated from the beginning of the emperor and the emperor came on the throne in 1925. So 1925 plus 11 is 1936. So this is a Japanese uh, uh, council from 1936, but there should be five towns. And the town name is at the bottom here, as I've shown you. Abishiri is uh, uh, at the bottom. So that's how you read the town name. Now, as it turns out, I do have now three of these uh, councils. Um, the post offices, the temporary post offices were open all along this eclipse path in northern Hokkaido uh, of Japan. Uh, and there were lots of expeditions, uh, scientific expeditions that going there. And these uh, uh, temporary post uh, postmarks were available from the 16th of June until the 22nd of June. Eclipse Day was the 19th of June. So these two are opening post office days, and this one is on Eclipse Day. Uh, I'm still looking for the other two towns, but they make lovely uh, uh, early cancels, and they're the earliest pictorial cancel. But once again, a couple of covers show up on eBay for a National Geographic Solar Eclipse Expedition. To Kustani in the USSR, or on the right here, it's to Siberia. So these are American covers into the eclipse expedition. And in fact, it's uh, in Kazakhstan, right in the northern part of Kazakhstan today. And um, back then too, uh, Americans called it Siberia, of course. And so once again, you can have two observations from dramatically different locations. And that can add both to your knowledge and to your uh, into your um, uh, uh, ecl uh, eclipse uh, philately collection. So when was the earliest cancel? I've showed you two early uh, eclipse cancels from Sweden in 54 and Japan in 36. Well, the earliest cancel I've been able to identify is from the Dutch East Indies in 1901, eclipse camp in Kerang Sega. Now, Kerang Sega was a little, little place. Uh, but American, uh, Dutch, British expeditions all went there. And one of the reasons was this eclipse was six and a half minutes long, a very long eclipse and well worth going to. So even if some clouds come in, you've still got plenty of opportunity if they move around uh, to see the eclipse. The equipment they took was substantial. Look at the size of these telescopes. You needed big ships to uh, and plenty of porters uh, to move this sort of equipment around. Uh, although, of course, it wasn't, uh, it was assembled on site, but even the components are big. Uh, this is an interesting, because there was a, a temporary uh, use of this eclipse stamp from April the 1st to May 23rd, this eclipse camp stamp. Um, and here's a commercial cover using the eclipse stamp, stamp which is, and it's, it's cancelled at Padang. Now, Padang the eclipse camp was down down the, the coast, significantly down the coast. They had runners running um, uh, mail and, in fact, anything else, food and so on, uh, between the eclipse camp and the next nearest city. And then there was a biweekly uh, mail spoke between uh, that city um, and Padang. So the main post office was at Padang. The Eclipse Camp Cancel is hard to find, and this is nice because it's the Padang Cancel uh, courtesy postmark on the 18th of May, which was the Eclipse Day. And the 18th of May is also recorded up here 
And I've got this postcard both uh, used and unused. So there were plenty of them, even though this illustration is pasted on the back of, the, of, a, of a postal card. Um, and they were available to be mailed. So that's the earliest uh, um, eclipse cancel that I've come across. Let's have a quick look at some early expeditions. Uh, so expeditions, of course, were driven by the astronomers. And here's a couple of very early astronomers. Uh, uh, the seventh astronomer royal in England at Greenwich, uh, uh, George Airy. Uh, this is a letter, 1839 letter, folded letter. Now, Airy actually observed the, went to Italy in 1842 to observe the eclipse and led a number of eclipse, European eclipse uh, journeys uh, through from 1850 on. Uh, so he was a, certainly a very early eclipse astronomer. Um, Zantedeschi uh, was actually at the University of Padova, uh, at the University in Venice, and then moved to Padova. So this is a case where it was actually readdressed at the time of his his move. Uh, but he was particularly interested in the solar spectrum, and the first spectroscope occurred in eighteen sixty eight. This is a cover from the U.S. to him from the U.S. Naval Observatory who was responsible for many uh, uh, eclipse expeditions in the U.S. in 1870 um, uh, into, uh, into Italy. Um, and the first spectroscope was 1868, and helium was discovered in 1868. So he, they were obviously in contact with him over uh, research from eclipses. So there's a couple of early... Uh, astronomers. Uh, cu little, then coming to North America, the, the real research into eclipses started in North America with the 1878 eclipse. There was one in 1868, which got people really interested, uh, but 1878 was a massive eclipse. It was it was only, um, well, it's, uh, I think um, two and a half minutes long, but um, it uh, no, a little, a little over three minutes long, three minutes and 11 seconds, according to my note in front of me here. Um, but it was major because the railways had been pushing west so that uh, you could get the equipment that you needed uh, uh, moving west by the railway. The eclipse path went, went from, again, uh, west to east down through uh, the U.S. Um, many people went to Wyoming Territory. It wasn't yet state. And that's where Lieutenant Charles Grimes Bowman went. Um, and in fact, uh, other famous people went to this eclipse. For example, Thomas Edison was at the eclipse. He was only 30, 31 at the time. Uh, but he was testing out some of his um, uh, measurements uh, of heat uh, um, from the eclipse. But, uh, Lieutenant Bowman went to the eclipse. He was part of the National Almanac Office um, uh, expedition saw it. Uh, he lived in Delphi, Indiana. Um, so it's not surprised, but this is an 1878 cover. Uh, just after the eclipse, actually, the eclipse of 1878 was on the 29th of July. And, and um, another person that went to this eclipse, very important, down in the bottom left, M Maria Mitchell from Vassar College. Vassar College had been established uh, in the no U.S. Northeast um, uh, a little earlier on, the 1870s, I believe. And she very much wanted to prove that women could make uh, good astronomers. And she led an all-women's expedition uh, to observe the eclipse. Um, the U.S. Naval Office actually allocated uh, $8,000 at the time to different eclipse expeditions to help them with their uh, transportation costs and uh, uh, with their um, uh, other uh other costs as well for for railway fares and so on so this really got ex eclipse expeditions going uh in uh, north america and this is a very good book on that e expedition so early eclipse expeditions well here 1886 uh this is uh, uh very young william pickering from harvard university going to grenada this is one of the uh, uh one of his um, helpers writing and writing back to her brother, um, explaining all the challenges they had. Uh, so there's a letter inside here and it's really delightful to read. Um, it was worth going to the 1886 clips because in Grenada, that eclipse was six and a half minutes long. So you had a lot of time to actually uh, observe. 
a little Canadian content here on the right, 1896. Uh, it's Professor Turner from Oxford passing through Canada, taking the Canadian Pacific Railway and then the Canadian Pacific ships on to Japan for, for the 1896 eclipse. So this is the uh, first letter from Montreal on the total uh, eclipse expedition. Uh, perhaps the one that you can collect most uh, correspondence from is, is the 1887 Eclipse Expedition led by Professor David Peck Todd uh, to Japan. Um, uh, he was uh, pretty famous both because of him and his wife, uh, who I'll discuss in a second. Uh, so he have a cover from the U.S. into Tokyo, Japan uh, to the U.S. Eclipse Expedition. And here you have a local letter to his wife. Mabel Loomis Todd at the American Legation in Tokyo, uh, care of the American Eclipse Expedition. And these were sent prior to the eclipse. Um, on the right, we have covers sent after the eclipse. Uh, and you can see a nice corner card here from the American Eclipse Expedition to Japan from Todd, from Yokohama sent to, uh, to New York. And here is a letter into uh, his wife, Mrs. D.P. Todd, Mabel Loomis Todd, uh, him being David Peck, Todd. So uh, uh, to catch her, she came back through, uh, uh, got off the boat in Vancouver, British Columbia. But obviously uh, she was, and they were taking the railway back uh, to the Northeast, uh, to Smith College, which is near Boston. Uh, obviously it didn't make it to her because it was unclaimed. It came from the Nas Nautical Almanac office, and that's not particularly surprising because um, Mabel Loomis Todd's father uh, uh, was uh, working at the Nautical Almanac office. So there's a number of covers from that expedition. Uh, David Todd also led an expedition to, the, uh, to West Africa, to Angola. Uh, this is quite a hard cover to get. Apparently, uh, this is, a, of course, a Navy Department uh, U.S. Expedition to West Africa, 1889. Unfortunately, it's cut a bit at the end, um, but apparently there's not many of these covers around. I didn't know that when I bought it, but uh, apparently it's quite desirable to have. He has a nice, on the back, he has a nice um, uh, Navy Department uh, hand stamp. And in fact, they were on the USS Pensacola. Uh, you know, again, be, uh, Navy ships were necessary to transport their big equipment. And this is coming home um uh, in london uh this was sent to him in charge of the u.s eclipse expedition on the pants cover in london um so it's a return journey um again the uh 1889 uh, um uh, expedition uh was uh over four minutes of uh, totality so it was sort of worth going to angola for it they went to Libya, he and his wife, in 1900, and again in 1905, and she was an author. And she wrote a book, a Tripoli, the Mysterious, by the name of Lunas Todd, after incorporating information from both their uh, 1900 and their 1905 trips to, uh, uh, to Libya. And I love it, just addressed to him, Tripoli, Barbary, Africa, no hotel, nothing, uh, but obviously it, it found him. And she also wrote a book on the total eclipses of the sun. Um, and so she was as much involved as he was. Uh, she is that probably best known uh, as um, uh, in another context as being the uh, uh, editor of the poems of Emily Dickinson. Um, and uh, that is probably her biggest claim that not, rather than these. Anyway, uh, let's, moving on. The other big uh, person, of course, involved with eclipses was Arthur Eddington at Cambridge University. And that's because he used an eclipse to confirm Einstein's theory. Einstein was writing his papers uh, sort of just after the First World War, um, 1914, 1916. Uh, and Eddington was probably the first person in the West uh, to actually pick up and advocate for Einstein's theory. But before he actually confirmed the theory, here's a postcard that I didn't even know I was going to get with his. All I bid, I bid on a postcard that said that was uh, the note. The note was eclipse camp, splendid country and climate, all ready for the eclipse. So I bid on. 
Little did I know that it was actually signed by R. A. S. Eddington, Arthur S. Eddington. Uh, so this is actually a lovely card to have in your collection because it, Eddington was incredibly important. In 1912, he'd gone all the way down here to Brazil. He'd taken a boat all the way down here and then gone up a river. Again, you needed either railways or rivers to transport your equipment. And he was actually uh, located this exact place up here in Brazil. And, and after all of that, he was clouded out um, and didn't get any any readings whatsoever in 1912. But in 1919, uh, they were uh, uh, in the Portuguese colonies of St. Thomas and Prince, just in the here, and he managed to confirm Einstein's theory that, in fact, um, uh, magnetism can bend light. And that idea that a star's light could be bent uh, and be observed um, was the key to unlocking uh, Einstein. Uh, throughout the world. So here's the 90th anniversary of that showing pictures of Eddington, and here's the 100th anniversary uh, of that. Uh, Portugal and St. Thomas and Prince paid joint issues of, uh, of that eclipse. So let's go through some of these eclipses as from the 19th. So here's the 1920s, and this, this eclipse through the Indian Ocean coming down, and in fact, a lot of people went right up here, and, and it's still uninhabited today to the northwest part of uh, of Australia, because this was again a second chance um, to confirm Einstein's theory. There'd been clouds in the in the previous uh, 1919, and Eddington was accused a little bit of fudging the data. Um, so there was a lot of uh, effort uh, in 1922 uh, to try and confirm it. In fact, a lot of scientific groups confirmed up here because the weather was projections were perfect. And the eclipse was um, real again, almost six minutes long. And so everyone got great measurements and that really confirmed Einstein's theories. This one in 1925, we already saw the postcard of this, uh, was famous because it <coughs> went over New York City. And I love this one for 1927 in, in England, the eclipsed eclipse. Uh, <clears throat> the great trek made in vain. The best view is at Giggleswick. I love the name. And in fact, they had train journeys to the north part of England to see this eclipse. And if the best view was at Giggleswick, they are eclipse from Giggleswick, Giggleswick uh, in June 29th, uh, 1927. And there actually is a pub in Giggleswick now that you can go and drink in, and it's got all the eclipse memorabilia from over uh, uh, from almost 100 years ago. The first eclipse cachet, 1929 in the Philippines. Beautiful cachet. I've got it on a cover and on a postcard, and the back of the postcard shows the path of the eclipse through uh, the Philippines. Um, it was a cancellation authorized only on eclipse day. I, I love it. Um, and in fact, there was an American expedition that went, uh, na naval expedition that went to the Philippines in 1929. This eclipse was over five minutes. So again, worthwhile going to. I'm missing a few eclipses in the middle. But that's all right. 1930. So the last one was 1929. 1930. U.S. Naval Expedition to Tonga. Now, Tonga is the middle of nowhere. Look look where this eclipse path went. you really got to find little islands. And Tonga's right in here somewhere. And uh, that's where the U.S. Naval Expedition went. There's three different hand stamps uh, of this expedition. Uh, these two covers are sort of the best covers I think that I've got. I've got a number of covers from this expedition. Uh, but what's nice about these uh, two covers, they're pack boat covers. Uh, here's a packet boat cover uh, where the um, uh, they dropped it off in Fiji, uh, Tonga stamp used in Fiji. Um, and this is a, 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 a cover that was posted originally in Tonga, Nayafu, but at Pago Pago, Samoa, and the U.S. Uh, uh, stamp was put on to pay ML postage. It wasn't going very far. It was going to the west coast of the U.S., Berkeley, California, but it was missent to Oakland. Also, this little hand stamp's nice. They ask you, F.I. means friendly islands, and Tonga were known as the friendly islands. And once again, U.S. naval expedition, you could carry big equipment um, uh, to observe the eclipse. So we're up to 1930. What's next? 1932, New England. So there was a eclipse path, that, and I haven't found any Canadian covers for this, 
but it went through New Hampshire and Maine. And this is a, uh, a letter postmarked at Freiburg, Maine. And this is a, an eclipse as seen from Freiburg, Maine, August 31st, 1912. We've seen this eclipse before. If you recall, right at the beginning where I showed you that cover with the sun and the moon and the and it was posted on eclipse day, uh, the eclipse day was August 31st, 1932. However, I think the post office, postmaster lies a little bit. The letter was mailed and postmarked while the sun was in total eclipse. Can you believe that someone would be inside a post office cancelling stuff while there was an eclipse to see outside? I think he probably stretched the uh, uh, the credibility a little bit. The two on the right are from New Hampshire, which is, a, um, and um, uh, the first one is from Rumsey Depot, New Hampshire, and this is Lake Wanapasaukee, uh, New Hampshire, with a nice hand-drawn uh, eclipse. I, and uh, signed by the postmaster. You can find covers from this eclipse uh, um, reasonably easily um, from all over because people are now really interesting. This is an interesting eclipse, 1937 to Canton Island. Now, Canton Island is the no uh, North Island in the Phoenix Islands. The Americans had been visiting the island a lot for to collect guano and um, uh, and yet the British believed they owned the island because it was part of the Gilbert and Ellis Islands. So on this eclipse, both British and American expeditions both showed up at the island, not knowing the other one was coming. And in fact, it is reported that the British actually fired a gun across the, the bow of the American ship because they didn't think they should be there and they wanted the better position to, uh, to observe from. In the end... Everyone agreed to just sit back and uh, enjoy the eclipse and let the politicians sort it out. So here on the left, we have um, two Americans uh, covers from the USS Avocet, um, which went to Canton Island from the, the eclipse. This one was sent to Pearl Harbor, territory of Hawaii. And this one went to a Lieutenant Commodore, Commodore in Berlin, Germany, and the US, US National Geographic Eclipse Expedition. The two on the right are from the British expeditions, which were uh, mainly British, uh, English, Australian, New Zealand um, uh, astronomers. Uh, this one posted in Western Samoa with the HMS Her Majesty's ship Wellington uh, for the eclipse uh, and the oval uh, eclipse um, cancellation, which shows up much better down here. New Zealand Solar Eclipse Expedition in the Phoenix Island, 1937. And this cover at the bottom, which is going into uh, Fiji, uh, has both the British and the American uh, cancellation. So it showed that they, they didn't end up in a major battle. Moving along, the next one, 1947. Remember, this, uh, the Second World War interrupted a lot of eclipse expeditions. And so uh, the next uh, one sort of were after the war. So this is 1947 in Brazil. Uh, and again, you can find this cover uh, with an American uh, APO uh, cancelled locally on the back for the 20th of May, uh, which was the eclipse day. Um, the 1947 eclipse was, uh, again, a little over five minutes. Of course, I'm quoting you the longer eclipses here, and uh, there are a number of shorter ones in between, which people didn't necessarily go to. Uh, this cover almost always comes with uh, a description down here in the right, and it's a souvenir uh, cover of the uh, of the expedition, but also on the left I have uh, an amateur radio, what are called QSL cards, and QSL and there it is down here. QSL means contacting you. Um, uh, often have very interesting um, e eclipse because a lot of people interested in astronomy who are also interested in amateur radio, and uh, consequently. You can see in this particular uh, Finland card, uh, they've got a, a measure of the eclipse path that which went over uh, and into Africa, much like this is showing here. The eclipse path went into Africa. From 1947, we need to 1948. And this, this cover jumped up and I, well, God, I've got to have this cover. And then I had to research it. And then I subsequently got this bottom cover here uh, with a USS ship postmark. Uh, it's an annular eclipse, actually, uh, this one, uh, as depicted by the postmark. 
this uh, this apparently here says solar eclipse and this points to this little island here well in fact if you look that little island is right off Hokkaido here and it's called Reban Island it's incorrectly spelled here and the eclipse path went through there and the Japanese had a special cancel uh, for that eclipse and so once again we've got a lovely pictorial cancel uh, for a solar eclipse from 1948, we go to 1958, again, an eclipse in Japan, uh, and again, an annular eclipse, as illustrated by the Ring of Fire in the Eclipse Council here. And it looks like this eclipse, if you just looked at a map, it misses Japan completely. But if you go down and blow it up a little care more carefully and dig into it, it goes over islands south of Japan, right south of Tokyo. And this island actually has an observatory on it, and that's what this council refers to. Uh, this is the island and the observatory for that council. So once again, uh, a, an eclipse council that encourages you to do a little bit of digging around, a little bit of researching, a lot of fun. Um, 1958, uh, uh, the International Geophysical Year. Um, and once again, the eclipse path was in the Pacific and looks like it goes over nothing land, but it did go over Puka Puka in the northern Cook Islands. And in fact, a couple of covers, this one is cancelled at Puka Puka Island in the Cook Islands. Not many people living there even today, let alone back in 1958, uh, going to Wellington. And this one is cancelled on the US board Point Defiance ship. And once again, a nice um, QSL card from amateur photography saying that a member of the National Bureau of Standard Ionosphere sounding teams with the International Geophysical Year Expedition that observed the eclipse of the sun on October 12th, 1958. The stamp at the bottom here is just to remind you the International Geophysical Year actually did attract stamps from quite a lot of countries. And this is the American stamp, as many of you probably know. 1961, important. Why? Well, two reasons. Number one, this is a, 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 a pictorial postmark that doesn't show the eclipse path it shows actually a picture of an eclipse. And that's perhaps cutting uh, hairs a little bit fine, but it is a nice picture of an eclipse. For, and this one from Yugoslavia from the 15th of uh, February, by the way, it's easy to interpret that as November, but it's the 15th of February, 1961. And on the right, these are the first stamps that were brought out for a specific eclipse. They mentioned the 15th of February, 1961, the two stamps. And so these were brought out for a specific uh, eclipse. And now we're beginning to see stamps tied to eclipses. And this is a, a, a um, uh, rep this building here is this building here, and this building here is this building here. So these are maximum cards as defined in the European tradition. Big Eclipse 1963. Uh, I had this one up once before, but here is the American. It started off coming into the U.S. and then came across Canada. And many of you may have remember this eclipse from your younger days, if you're of the right age. But let's start with the American before, because the eclipse path came in across the U.S. Uh, before it entered Canada. So I'll start with the American covers. Uh, a bunch of covers you can find, uh, rocket covers, um, uh, and stamp club covers and uh, uh, Port Washington, New York covers. This is a flying laboratory. Now these covers are, uh, you can find, uh, they're almost always with meter cancels. Uh, most of them are at the five cent rate, uh, which was the internal rate to the US. Uh, but finding them at, at an eight cent rate to Canada to Abbott, Abitibi Power and Paper at 408 University Avenue, Toronto, finding them that needed an eight cent rate, not a five cent rate. So that's a little different. And occasionally you might find a fit them at the 15 cent rate for international if they were mailed uh, to England. And again, they included a quick description of what was going on. And the Douglas Aircraft Corporation uh, uh, had a flying laboratory. Uh, and in fact, um, Scott Carpenter, the astronaut was part of uh, that flying, that, that team. The Canadians did the same thing. 
this is the uh, DCA uh, Douglas uh, boat postmark in Edmonton, uh, Eclipse Wonderful. But Jack Arnell in Ottawa arranged for a Royal Canadian Air Force flight uh, down the Eclipse Path. And here we have the, um, uh, the preliminary navigation flight, the instrument calibration flight, the dress rehearsal flight, and the final cover, which I showed earlier on tonight, um, of that. He was very mad. He reported in the philatelic press he made every attempt to have these covers, the, these final covers, cancelled on Eclipse Day, July the 20th, as shown in the cachet. And he delivered the, the uh, covers to the post office and they were all cancelled July 21st, the next day. So the post office did not carry out uh, the agreement that he had with them. And he was very mad about that. And this is another cover for that eclipse uh, that was uh, posted at Watson Lake in the Yukon. And uh, a fun cover. This is probably my favorite eclipse stamp uh, from the Cook Islands. Again, the eclipse path goes over what you would think is pretty nondescript territory. Um, in this case, it's in the Southern Cook Islands. It went over the island of Manue, and they had a special council for Manue Cook Islands. Um, now, nobody lived basically on Manue. They were, uh, there were a number of workers there collecting copra, copra, and in fact, a Russian expedition actually came in too uh, to observe the eclipse uh, at Manue, but uh, the only buildings were the the, the huts that the, that the copra workers uh, uh, worked in. Uh, but everything got sorted out. Someone was made in charge. And I've actually been to the archives in the Cook Islands and uh, checked all the details on this one. It, it's kind of a lot of fun. These are the three caches you're most likely to see for that uh, um, uh, eclipse. Uh, the bottom one is mailed to the USA, so required seven pence in postage, seven pennies, which is over six. Uh, the one to New Zealand is overpaid at six pence. Um, and, and this one also going to New Zealand was from the Carter Observation Solar Eclipse Expedition, uh, and the Carter Observatory is in New Zealand. The cover, uh, this is a nice cover that's registered, shows the uh, register. R3 registration label, much unused and a very nice uh, solar eclipse uh, Cook Islands Council. Uh, commemorating the eclipse of the sun at Rarotonga, that's not quite right. Rarotonga was outside the eclipse path. Uh, Manue was in the eclipse path, the island of Rarotonga, which is the main island where Cook Islands was not, but it's still a lovely cover. And this also, 1965, uh, the uh, the uh, British team was carried on the her Majesty's New Zealand ship endeavor uh, uh, to the Cook Islands. And this is signed by the uh, head of the Carter Observatory. This is the American eclipse expedition that actually went to French Polynesia. Uh, and this is another QSL card. I love this QSL card, solar eclipse expedition to Aitutaki. But I love the guy sneezing here and the sharks just waiting for him to come to get him. The stamp was overprinted in 1967 when New Zealand went to decimal currency, and there are a few varieties on this overprint that you can find. Moving up to 1970, I, I'm particularly partial to this eclipse because it was my first eclipse. Um, the cover here is Nantucket, and that's right there in the eclipse path. Uh, the covers at the bottom are from rocket firings from Wallops Island, and Wallops Island, again, was right there in the eclipse path. And at the top right here is from the Elgin Air Force Base. And uh, uh, again, that was right in the eclipse path. So these are all um, eclipse pass uh, covers from that uh, 1970 eclipse. Um, it's uh, well, three and a half minutes. It, it, was, it was okay. It wasn't a really long eclipse. But the thing I remember up here, and by then it was uh, less than a minute, I think, were the incredible shadow bands and uh, uh, amongst the sand dunes. Uh, and uh, no, I wasn't smoking pot or drinking beer at the time. Notice that it also went through Mexico. So uh, after the next slide, and that's a nice one for the uh, 1970 eclipse signed by uh, the director of NASA Wallops. This guy actually was pretty well known uh, in, in um, uh, space circles, uh, Robert Krieger. And 
Mexico, as I pointed out, was in the path. And they said that, you know, here it is, the 7th of March, 1970. But the first day cover is the 27th of November, 1970. So they were a little late, excuse me, a little late with their stamp. It is the lovely stamp. Um, and here's just four covers showing that stamp. 1972, first slogan council. Where? From Antigonish, Nova Scotia. Here we go. Sun, total eclipse, eclipse total, July 30th. Uh, now, here are these two covers are from Antigonish, Nova Scotia, cancelled with that, uh, with that um, uh, slogan, cancelled. But this cover is from Charlottetown, with a nice cachet. Now, in fact, Charlottetown and, uh, uh, and Antigonish were both almost on the centre line as the eclipse went through. And um, this cover is one of the first cruise ship covers. The cruise ship left New York on July the 8th, observed the eclipse on July the 10th, and called into Gaspé on July the 12th, where, 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 the, uh, where the covers were postmarked. So this is all that 1972 eclipse. So 63 and 72 raised eclipse um, uh, expectations in Canada, as well as the US. And then it all started really in 73. And this was a long eclipse. This was an incredible eclipse because it was over seven minutes and no eclipse this, this century is over seven minutes. Uh, this one was seven minutes and four seconds. And in fact, many people took the pin uh, boat to Canberra and, uh, and observed the eclipse out here. You can see a very wide eclipse path, uh, the dark part in the middle of this uh, uh, picture up here. And um, Senegal put out three stamps. Senegal was just slightly south of the eclipse path, but they still put out three stamps. And so here's the first day cover. Uh, Mali, which is uh, Niger, which is much further in, uh, was right in the center of the eclipse path. So here is a first day cover from Niger and a block of uh, imperforate block of four stamps from, from there. Uh, but they weren't. The only two countries, Mauritania, which, by the way, let me just go back, Mauritania, which indeed is in here, uh, Mauritania uh, really, sorry, uh, um, put out three stamps. And also you've got these um, lovely um, uh, impress sheets that you can get from for many French issues and French territory issues. So here you have the same, this is the issued stamp. But here you have it in three different colors, uh, as you can get uh, embossed um, uh, deluxe, deluxe sheets of the stamps um, that can add something different to a collection. Uh, very quickly, I like this one here. We saw the 1973 eclipse. So there's a postcard sent from Dakar, Senegal. And here are a couple of things associated with the Kit Peak National Observatory trip. But the real note, the real thing about the 73 eclipse, even though it was long, was, as I mentioned before, the flight of the Concorde. And the Concorde left the Canary Islands up here, came down, intercepted the eclipse path here, and flew along the eclipse path all the way to Chad. And the people on board got 74 minutes of totality. Um, it wasn't terribly as useful um, uh, scientifically because of the warping of the windows uh, on the roof of the of the prototype of the Concorde uh, but still it was a major achievement and if you were going to illustrate this you've got to be very careful what Chad stamps you choose uh, here's two pictures of Chad stamps of the Concorde this one is an Air France after the prototype this is the prototype you can tell the prototype by the tail and this is the right tail so this is the prototype the top cover here, I often wondered why I got it. I mean, it, it had to do with a total eclipse, and, but, and it had the Concorde on it. Well, well wait, wait a minute, but it's from French Guiana. So I had to really scratch my head, and you can read your French here and catch up with me, but in fact, the eclipse path started way over here at French Guiana, and so that cover is associated with this eclipse and the Concorde. At the end of the eclipse, uh, that path is in Kenya, and here's a couple of covers from Kenya. Once again, a slogan cancel uh, associated with that. That is not an easy cancel to find.
1979, US and Canada. Here's two from the US at Washington because the eclipse path, as you can see from the map on this cover, started in the US and then zipped up through uh, Canada. So here's a couple of covers from uh, Golden Day or Washington, celebrating that the fact that uh, two eclipses are now passed over the Golden, uh, Golden Dale Observatory, one in 1979, but also one in 1918. So the cancel is Golden Dale will eclipse pass cross. And on the right, we have the continuation of that eclipse path up through uh, Manitoba. Uh, these two covers are canceled at Eel Falls, Ontario. Uh, but where was I? I was in Gamely, Manitoba on the 26th of February, freezing my butt off. Oh, it was cold. It was so cold that some of the people trying to take pictures, their shutters froze on their cameras. And that's what we we eclipsophiles that chase eclipses are willing to put up with to see totality. And totality through the ice ice uh, uh, in the sky in Manitoba was magnificent. Oh. So that's 1979, 1980, Kenya. Well, it only went through the bottom corner of Kenya here, the eclipse path. Uh, Voy is the place where it went. And that's where these two cancel covers are canceled. This is one of my covers actually. Um, in Voy, and we were joined by the Minister of uh, Tourism, so I got him to autograph it, and I got it registered just to add some uh, fun to the cover. By 1983, uh, Indonesia, you've seen that this inverse uh, U eclipse path uh, earlier on. Uh, I went to Salatiga, got this cover signed by Sal in Sal Postmark and Eclipse Day in Salatiga, signed by the Postmaster. But I love this council. Many places, and Indonesia is one of them, believe that an eclipse is caused by a dragon or some other animal coming and eating the sun. Mm -hmm. And then you have to bang drums to chase it away and the sun will reappear. And so, in fact, in Salatiga, when you're observing this eclipse, all of a sudden the drums are banging and so on, and well, you know, the sun comes back, thereby proving their theory. Um, and in fact, uh, you can see that sort of cancel on other uh, first days, but I think Indonesia has done it the best of anyone, and this is a beautiful cancel, the dragon coming to eat the sun. 1988, the Philippines, um, right early in the eclipse path, uh, you weren't going to go to any places up here, uh, but there's the Philippines, two stamps, beautiful stamps coming out for the eclipse. Uh, went to southern Philippines in um, General Santos City in Mindanao. And Mindanao was at that time um, a lot of Islamic uh, uprising. Uh, so most American eclipse uh, chasers would not go to the Philippines and Mindanao. Canadians, this is the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Uh, went and they had a sticker for all their telescopes and I put the sticker on a cover and went to the post office to get it cancelled and then that night there was a uh, uh, a big show put on for visiting Eclipse people and guarded tremendously by the military and it turned out that sitting in the front row was General Ramos, Fidel Ramos. And so I waltzed up with my cover and got blocked along the way and said, no, I want an autograph. And in the end, I was taken to, to the front row and I got uh, Ramos to autograph my cover. His daughter also, Angel Ramos, autographed the cover. And of course, he subsequently became the president of, of the Philippines in uh, 1992. 1991, Hawaii had a big cancel, but no, no... Um, stamps but in fact Latin, uh, central america had a bunch of stamps mexico put out stamps bolivia put out stamps with the eclipse in the middle of a of a of a double stamp and el salvador and uh, sorry i said bolivia i meant uh, el salvador my apologies had a nice cancellation first day cancellation costa rica put out stamps uh in 1992 they used photos from um the eclipse the previous year to put out a lovely sheet like this uh, for a, um, um, a, a, a con um, I want to say a conference, but I've forgotten what it was. It was a, 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 some sort of um, scientific conference, I think. 
but these stamps come in this lovely sheet and uh, uh, are very nice stamps. Uh, 1994, well, there was an annular eclipse that came through here, uh, went over Buffalo. I was in Point Pelee for that one. And then later in the year, there was a total solar eclipse that went through South America. Uh, Bolivia put out a lovely stamp. They brought it out early at the 21st of October. The eclipse wasn't until um, uh, the uh, November the uh, 3rd, I think. So they brought it out a couple of weeks early so you could buy copies of the stamp and create your own covers. Um, the um, Bolivian Philatelic Federation put out a nice uh, souvenir card. Um, and uh, Paraguay also issued a stamp. So here you have uh, uh, Bolivia, Paraguay. And then right at the end of the eclipse path, it went through the corner of, uh, of uh, Brazil. So Brazil didn't put out a stamp, but they had a nice cancel uh, for that, for the eclipse. Now, this is very, uh, this uh, Bolivian Philatelic Federation uh, souvenir card also comes available in a, Mutra uh, specimen uh, edition, which is much, much more difficult. And this is just one of my created covers. I was up in the Antiplano of Bolivia and uh, I got it finally cancelled uh, on the right day when we got back to La Paz. And this is the, a, a railway station cancel um, where we stopped to observe the eclipse. 1995, India, special cancel in black and in purple, uh, and a cover created uh, where uh, Jay Pashikov, who's very well known for eclipse education, the late Jay Pashikov, I might say, unfortunately, um, uh, was in India at the Garfort uh, Hotel, Mukan Garfort Hotel, and so was I, with, with him. But that didn't stop, it didn't stop at India. Also Thailand issued a stamp, uh, Vietnam issued a stamp and the Philippines issued a stamp and they were all in the eclipse past so in Thailand it was a booklet um, that le leads by the way there's a, a history in Thailand of eclipse uh, uh, a viewing uh, King Rama uh, or also known as Mongut um, took people uh, in 1868 he invited people to his country to observe the eclipse and uh, he took them to the eclipse. Unfortunately, he contracted malaria and his son also contracted malaria. He died in 1868. His son, fortunately, uh, continued to, to live and became the next king. But King Mongut, uh, this is a stamp for, for him. Uh, the name, the king name is Rama, the, but he was known as Mongut. And this is a lovely eclipse stamp in his memory. And in the bottom right here, here's a specimen overprint on the Philippine stamp. Mongolia. Well, this eclipse expedition went right through Mongolia and eastern USSR. Mongolia put up a lovely sheet for this. Uh, Jay Anderson, the weather forecaster, went to Mongolia and uh, clouded out his, his, uh, his uh, note on this cover. And... Uh, he wasn't terribly happy about it. Thankfully, he did send a cover to me, uh, which I very much treasure and appreciate. 1998 was much more uh, um, enjoyable circumstances. I was originally going to go to Montserrat, but many of you may remember the volcano in Montserrat blew and actually completely covered the town of main town of Plym Plymouth. And so there was no way you could go to Montserrat. So I cancelled my bookings and went to Aruba instead, who very nicely put out a couple of stamps. And of course, Bonaire uh, is uh, right in the same eclipse path right in here. Um, and uh, they put out uh, a souvenir sheet and three stamps. Uh, another postcard with another fabulous eclipse, the most marvelous spectacle nature can offer on earth. Um, you can find these postcards that are kind of fun. One thing I remember was the luxury of just standing in the water with your binoculars observing the eclipse and having the rum punches delivered to you. You just had to make sure that they weren't coming too fast so that you were still in good shape to observe the eclipse. 
I've titled this one, The Great European Eclipse, as a throwback to the Great American Eclipse, which we'll get to in very shortly. The Great European Eclipse of 1999 went right across all these countries, and they all put out stamps for the eclipse. None of the, they were almost all clouded out, as we knew they would be in, Eng in England, uh, in Alderney, uh, in uh, uh, France. Uh, certain people in certain locations got a break in the clouds and saw the eclipse. But even out in Hungary and Bulgaria uh, and Iran, uh, they were uh, largely clouded out. It was very clear from the weather forecast, the best place to be. The further east you could go, the better you would be. Um, and so here's some other things from that, that European eclipse, um, just random things. There was another Concorde flight. Air France had a Concorde flight. British Airways had a couple of Concorde flights. Uh, they didn't extend it nearly like they did before. Uh, before the eclipse, France had some wonderful um, postmarks ad advertising the eclipse, telling people that it was coming uh, from all sorts of different locations. Uh, this is a postmark from Germany. Uh, and I went to Turkey because the further east you could go, the better. And this is a NASA reference publication. Uh, Espenak is the um, is the astronomer that uh, that that maps all the maps all the eclipse paths. Jay Anderson is the weather forecaster from Canada who does the weather forecast along the eclipse paths. So you 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 can get location and weather prospects. Uh, and they put one of these out for many eclipses during the 80s and 90s. This is the August 11th, 1999. And this cover I've got down here is autographed by both Anderson and, and Aspenak. So I like to, I like that cover. I observed the eclipse in Hasan Kaya, uh, on which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, there are a couple of uh, bogus uh, uh, issues associated with this eclipse because it was going through Europe completely, completely uh, um, uh, bogus. These are Russian federations, uh, Kyrgyzstan by Reiter. You can see that at the top here, they're way off the eclipse path. And in fact, this one on the right, the, the, the uh, um, denominations are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which gives you a hint that it's not a regular um, eclipse issue. But more power to you if you want to collect these and put them in your, uh, in your uh, collection. Uh, I like uh, as much variety as possible, and so I illustrate. There's also another souvenir sheet that I am not illustrating here, uh, but these are bogus issues. As I said, I was in Hassan Kayev, uh, observing on the top of this hill in the bottom right-hand corner here. Incredible location. The uh, the town has been around since eighteen since the eighteen hundred BC, BCE. And so um, there's all sorts of dwellings here in the, in the cliff faces. You walked up the side of the cliff to get to the old town up here. And this is the current town. This is the Tigris River. This location is now underwater. Uh, Turkey built a dam and um, flooded the whole of the river valley uh, for irrigation purposes and hydroelectric purposes. And of course, Iraq, which is downstream of the Tigris, wasn't too happy because of much less water now it gets to Iraq. Uh, but it was an incredible location to observe an eclipse from. On to the new millennium. <clears throat> 2001's Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Madagascar, all brought out stamps. This shows you how the temperature drops during a solar eclipse. Uh, 10 degrees um, Fahrenheit, at least, during a solar eclipse. You really notice that drop in temperature. This was from uh, Zambia. I just threw it in because we've got the Zambia stamps and I thought I would point it out. So, and this is a commercial cover using one of the uh, um, Zimbabwe stamps. Next year, Angola hit it again. The next eclipse went through Angola and South Africa. Uh, I was clouded out in Kruger National Park, uh, very annoyed about that, but uh, the stamp that they brought out was beautiful and you could use it to get a nice uh, a, a nice cancel uh, for your 4th of December eclipse. This cover I picked up a long time ago and I didn't know, had no idea, oh, just a nice cover with an with a eclipse cancel. Um, 
but you're surely, you know, French Antarctica? No way. Well, it turns out the eclipse went right over French Antarctica through Crozac. It ended up in Australia, and so you can even find eclipse uh, postmarks uh, from outback Australia. Put this one in. Uh, this is not a total solar eclipse. Uh, it's an annular eclipse. The postmark is, isn't even from the area that it was in, but it's the closest postmark, Eureka, Nunavut. <clears throat> but I put this in because you can see, uh, I think it's Jay Anderson again, who created a personalized stat of an eclipse to use on his postage. The big eclipse for 2003, however, was Antarctica. And believe it or not, some people took a boat to Antarctica. They got off and got on land, and they there was all the weather prospects showed there was no chance of seeing it. They sure saw half a minute of totality with the eclipse sun almost sitting on the horizon. It's an amazing to see the photographs those people got uh, from this trip to Antarctica. There were better ways to get there. Uh, I flew. Uh, there was a flight from Melbourne down, intercepted the eclipse path, and then came back to Melbourne. Melbourne actually, in 1976, had had a special eclipse cancel um, for an eclipse that ended up going through Melbourne. And I took a couple of those covers and re-canceled them for the uh, 2003 eclipse. And uh, this flight was almost 14 hours. And because it left Melbourne and returned to Melbourne, it was considered a domestic flight. And for a while... It was the longest domestic flight in the world. It has seen, since been, quote unquote, eclipsed uh, in that category. Um, but for a long time, it was the longest domestic flight in the world, 14 hours flying over Antarctica. This cover is signed by the captain and crew of the Qantas flight. There was another flight out of uh, Punta Arenas, um, Chile, and uh, they intercepted the eclipse and then went back to Punta Arenas. And in fact, uh, the Davis space, the Australian Antarctic Davis space is actually very close to the eclipse path. And apparently a bunch of them keyed in to observe uh, the eclipse from Davis. And so this is a Davis space, Australian Antarctic cover. Pitcairn Islands, 2005, Oino, um, put out a beautiful set of stamps. But in fact, you had to go way off Pitcairn to see this eclipse. Uh, the only way to do it was by boat, and the MV Discovery, Motor Vessel Discovery, went there. Uh, a really favorite eclipse, uh, Libya in 2006. The uh, tented camp they set up in the middle of the Libyan desert. Here we are in the middle of the Libyan desert. They set up a tented camp for over 2,000 people. Uh, a whole city, tented city in the middle of the desert that had showers, running water. Um, you standing out in the desert, cleaning your teeth next to the German on one side and the, a Dutchman on the other side. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Not only that, they had perfect internet working. And this was 2006 in the Libyan desert. They brought out a beautiful souvenir sheet. And I think it, the stamps are just gorgeous. I blew one of them up here to show a camel uh, and, and the, uh, 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 the diamond ring effect on the, of the eclipse. Um, and uh, I think these stamps are just delightful. Um, Egypt also put, put out a couple of uh, uh, stamps or the same stamp in both stamp form and souvenir sheet form uh, even though the eclipse hardly touched Egypt at all uh, a lot of people went to Turkey for this eclipse and uh, there's some very good covers from Turkey I'm not showing them today uh, another flight from Dusseldorf Germany up from Dusseldorf over observing the eclipse coming back um, and this person used the Portugal souvenir sheet, a Portugal souvenir sheet from the 2005 eclipse as a cache, uh, but did cancel it with the, uh, the flight details. We went to the end of the eclipse path, which finished down in Mongolia, not just in outer Mongolia, but way in outer Mongolia, outer, outer Mongolia. And as this postcard points out, the eclipse was beautiful. And I would add, but the roads were terrible. And literally, this is what the roads looked like as you headed out uh, to Western Outer Mongolia. It was bumpy, it was dusty, but it was a great eclipse. This is the longest eclipse in the 21st century. Um, 
it started, you could start going in Bhutan and then uh, North Korea put out a couple of souvenir sheets uh, on the eclipse theme, even though they're nowhere part of the eclipse path. Uh, the eclipse path went through China. So many of us went to China. China put out a, 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 a uh, a souvenir envelope, but they're cancelled. They didn't even bother to cancel the stamps with the uh, with their souvenir envelope. So we got our own uh, 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 envelopes cancelled. Uh, we observed up at this dam uh, outside of uh, Shanghai, and it was an incredible thing. There's a massive dam on the top of a hill, and during the night they pump the water up to the dam, and then during the day the water flows down, creating hydropower. And at night, they pump it back up when they don't need it, the electricity. And then the next day, it goes down. Uh, so uh, amazing. And this is a cover. Uh, we were just in here in Shanghai. French Polynesia 2010 went through the Cook Islands. Look at this. You really had to get out to see this one. French Polynesia had a, a souvenir card. Oh, this is the picture side. This is the postage side. And there were five eclipse cancels. Almost nobody knew about them. Uh, you'll notice Taka, Tatakoto, which is this one here, um, uh, and then the four others, Anna, Hik, Hikeru, Hale, and Papi. And only Papi, which is the capital of Tahiti, was not in the eclipse path. The other four atolls were all in the eclipse path. Um, uh, as I as the map shows, it also went through a number of other places, and uh, it went through the Cook Islands again, and Easter Island. And here's a couple of covers uh, related to Easter Island. The Germans flew in to Easter Island um, to see this eclipse. Very recently, I discovered this postmark, which is from uh, uh, Argentina, and Argentina you'll see is right at the end of the eclipse, and. Uh, it's amazing that when you have a hobby like this, because it covers the whole world, you don't always know everything that's around. So I'm in the process of, of getting that um, uh, that cover with that postmark. Um, there may be another postmark like that that I'm looking for from the Falkland Islands, but I haven't got it yet. Well, we should uh, bring this slowly to a close, although we're coming to the end of the uh, uh, to more modern modern eclipses. 2012, Vanuatu put, put out stamps for a partial eclipse. Um, and Australia, Port Douglas was in the line of totality of the total eclipse. Australia poured out a souvenir envelope for that cancelled in Cairns. You could then take that envelope up into the eclipse path the, uh, 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 on the day of the eclipse and get it recancelled uh, on the eclipse path. Um, the Sierra Leone and Uganda, Uganda uh, eclipse went right the way through here. So here's a, uh, you could observe the eclipse at sea, um, uh, but you, it wasn't didn't touch any land until it got to Central Africa. So this is a uh, uh, total eclipse at sea, total eclipse at sea registered in Sierra Leone. And this one's in Uganda. By the time it got to Uganda, it was an annular eclipse. You can see here the dotted line, it becomes a dotted line on the eclipse path, which is an indication that this was a hybrid eclipse dot, dotted line at the beginning, then became total for a long way, and then became a, a, a ring of fire eclipse, an annular eclipse at the end. So this was a hybrid. I mean, who would expect to go to sit the uh, uh, Svalbard Islands to see an eclipse? Many people did go there to see this eclipse, and apparently they were accompanied by people with rifles to keep the polar bears away. But believe it or not, they saw they did see it, even though um, it was uh, uh, in March. Uh, so the Faroe Islands the, and the uh, um, uh, Svalbard Island both brought out eclipse stamps. Again, a, a, a duplet with the, the eclipse in the middle. Uh, and there was another flight from Dusseldorf up to marry the eclipse path, manage, and then come back to Dusseldorf. And this is an air balloon flight for that. Indonesia, they know how to put out. Here's my friend, the dragon eating the sun again. And this is for the eclipse of 2016. Um, this messy cover up on the right actually is from Tanadi. Tanadi is way over here, uh, cancelled on the eclipse day. 
but boy, they had a lousy ink pad, I can tell you. Beautiful suit, a beautiful sheet, the stamps. Uh, eight, eight triplets, eight, the stamps are in triplets, and there's eight triplets in this sheet with this lovely center piece. The Great American Eclipse of 2017. You all know that uh, it went through the US, right the way through the US last year. There were lots of cancellations, and this is just a few of those cancellations from many different uh, towns along the path. It certainly raised people's expectations. Chile 2019, um, again, the eclipse is in the middle of nowhere. It hits, hits Chile right here. Uh, the uh, La Higuera, um, and they put out a beautiful stamp, I thought, uh, for the eclipse, and they put it out uh, uh, 2nd of July. You could actually get it at the post office and use it on your own covers. I really do appreciate that. Uh, this was a postcard that was also available at the postcard, and this is the brochure, and I haven't talked about post office brochures. It's another example of something you can add to an eclipse collection. And top right is, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, because it's 2019, celebrating the 100th anniversary of Eddington's 1919 confirmation of Einstein's uh, theory uh, with a special cancel. An annular in China and the Republic of China, Taiwan in 2020, they put out astronomy stamps. And here, here's another little uh, side issue. It was an annular eclipse on the June the 21st. The stamp, however, is canceled on June the 20th. Why might that be? Well, June the 21st was the Sunday and they recognized Sunday in Taiwan. And so China put out a set of astronomy stamps showing an annular eclipse and uh, Taiwan put out a set of astronomy stamps. In Antarctica, 2002, there was an eclipse flight scheduled that I was going to go on and then canceled. Uh, but it did go over Antarctica. Both Argentina and Chile uh, brought out stamps. We're just about there, people. Um, Australia and New Zealand, 2023, um, both had sets of stamps uh, for the eclipse. Uh, the Indonesians were, were cancelled in Bayak, and Bayak is actually in West New Guinea, and so a little bit of um, politics involved. Uh, Indonesia does control West New Guinea, but they've been looking for their independence for a long time. No one knows about last year's uh, annular eclipse, October 14th, 2023, the Great Western Annular Eclipse in the US, and here's a postcard. Hi, as I'm writing this, it's growing darker and darker outside during this eclipse. So cool. Now, eclipse philately can involve a bunch of other things if you choose. You can look at some ephemera. You can go after eclipse soap or eclipse bicycle covers. Uh, you can certainly collect eclipse viewers, and this is for the 1963 eclipse. These are viewing glasses to view the eclipse. There are Cinderella's, and this is from the 1912 eclipse and that I put up from France. You can collect patches and, and badges and uh, pins for that matter. And of course, you have to have the appropriate libations to celebrate. So just a reminder, stamps, it includes stamps from all countries, including meters, cancels, first day, eclipse cancels, cachet, uh, commercial, private. You can look at the addresses and the senders and recipients. Uh, Postcards are particularly useful. Picture postcards, postal cards, amateur radio cards. You can look for autographs of astronomers, authors, captains, designers, etc., and books and brochures and advertising mail. You can take it wherever you want to take it, clips for laddling and have fun. Finally, let's talk about the eclipse coming up in three weeks' time. Maximum totality, four and a half minutes, but it's down here in Mexico and really serious um, uh, eclipse chasers will be down here in Mexico. Also, blue is represents uh, minimal cloud cover. And as you move along the eclipse path, the clouds get worse and worse. So here in Canada, we don't have a whole lot of... Uh, we've got to keep our fingers crossed for good weather. The prognosis is not terribly good, but I'd encourage you to be ready to get out there and see the eclipse. Uh, even if the cloud cover is bad, there's often um, 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 breaks in the clouds that you can see through. Uh, a little closer, as I focus in on, on the region near where I live, uh, uh, here we have uh, Cleveland's almost on the center line. 
and Cleveland gets about uh, four and a half minutes of totality. Buffalo is on the center line, and it gets uh, three and three quarter minutes of totality. Uh, Hamilton, just inside the line of totality, uh, gets about two minutes. Um, Kingston's in the line of totality. It gets uh, about three minutes because it's closer to the center line than, than Hamilton is. Hamilton's on there. Uh, Montreal, just inside, uh, gets about a one and a half minutes. Sherbrooke is probably as good a place as any if you can get there over three minutes, three and a quarter minutes of totality. So that's our coming eclipse. I hope you make it. Finally, uh, Canada Post has very kindly given me permission to show you the image of the eclipse stamp that will be issued this Thursday. Um, so it'll be available at post offices this Thursday. They've allowed us to have a sneak preview of the image if you haven't already seen it, but they've asked that uh, no photographs or, um, or screenshots be taken. So this is the stamp that CAN will be issuing uh, on Thursday to represent the eclipse coming up. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, David. We do have a, a small handful of questions. The first comes from Douglas Hill. Have you created a list of all eclipse stamps from all countries and for all eclipses? No, I've, I, I've largely done that tonight. Um, uh, there are a number of eclipses that I've missed. Um, for example, Portugal, I suggested, was, uh, had a, a, an annual eclipse in 2005 that was used on a, as a cachet on a later eclipse. Um, so there are a few things missing, but this was a pretty good overview of eclipses and, and cancels that are available. Pretty good overview. Mm -hmm. uh, another question. When it was clouded out at ground level, did people observe the eclipse from planes above the clouds? Yes, you can do that. Um, it's a little bit, um, uh, first of all, it's a lot more expensive to do that. Um, <laughs> which is often a, a major consideration. And secondly, um, it's not clear whether you, you need to plan it in, in advance because you've got to have the plane waiting for you. And so it's not like you can suddenly jump on a plane and go above the clouds uh, unless you're really wealthy and, and own your own plane. Um, so it's usually you have to look at the weather prospects, decide whether or not you're likely to see the eclipse. And if you're not likely to see the eclipse, then arrange a flight well ahead of time. All right, next question. I don't know if you would know the answer to this. Where can I find info on planned US special cancels for April 8th? Oh, I don't know where you would find that. Um, presumably on the US Post Office website, they, they had some, at least that's how the ones were handled for the, uh, the 2017 eclipse. Um, and the philatelic news, uh, uh, like Lynn's, also was a place to find out. But a lot of a lot of them you didn't know about ahead of time unless you were digging around in multiple places. Um, and I don't know what I've seen no ev no evidence yet of special cancels in the U.S. Though I would be very surprised if they didn't have special cancels, especially after what they did in two thousand and seventeen. All right, well, Gilles, you've answered your question. He's shown us the stamp. Um, Bill asks, how many eclipses have you visited? Well, we started with 24, and the upcoming one will make it 25, I presume. Correct. Exactly right, uh, uh, Lisa. Yeah. Um, can you recommend the best, the best viewing glasses or device for safely viewing? No, if you can go on the web, almost any viewing glasses now are uh, safe. I, I avoid those that look too cheap. Um, uh, but almost, almost any, if you go on the web, you can buy uh, viewing glasses. The Royal Astronomical Society of Canada had viewing glasses, and I don't know whether they still do. Oh, they're long sold out. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, but almost anywhere, uh, you and they're not very expensive, uh, you know, between $1 and $5 a, uh, uh, for a, uh, for a, a, a um, cardboard viewing holder with the glasses. But go on the web. Lots for sale. Thomas says he's unaware of any list of U.S. or Canadian postmarks planned for the eclipse. 
Uh, we had hoped USPS would design uh, a common council for towns and cities, but nothing is known. Yeah, I don't, I don't know of any. Uh, there will be a first day cover, obviously, for the Canadian stamp, um, uh, but I don't know of any other councils that are planned. Oh, uh, we do have one. Uh, Little Rock, Arkansas will have a special council, and that's in the U.S. Well, thank you, whoever put All that. Right, uh, next question. How much will we see in Nova Scotia? I'm in Wolfville, northwest of Halifax. Uh, you can go on the web and, and quickly pull up uh, a, uh, an eclipse path uh, and look that up. So I hate to guess how much you'll see in Nova Scotia. But as I pointed out, Sherbrooke, uh, if you're near the center line, Heartland, New Brunswick is right on the center line. And uh, um, that would be a good. So get as close to the center line as you can, and you'll probably get two and a half minutes, I think, two and a half to three minutes. You can search for Canadian Space Agency Eclipse, and they they have a picture of the path and some some of the cities listed with the times. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, Jean asks David, "Where are you heading to view the April eighth eclipse?" Well, I'm waiting to see what the clouds look like. Um, <laughs> I would normally have flown to uh, to Mexico, uh, but I'm still concerned about COVID, so trying to avoid. Um, yeah, uh, crowded, crowded sites, um, particularly planes. But probably, if I was betting at this moment, it will be Kingston. Mm -hmm. Can you view the eclipse in a mirror? You certainly can. Yeah, you certainly can. You've got to be very careful. You you can view it in a mirror, but it's not advisable to do so, uh, because a mirror will reflect the. Uh, uh, um, um, the sun very the sun's rays very strongly you can damage your eyes uh i answered that can you view the eclipse the totality you can view with your naked eyes you don't need a mirror and you could use a mirror for totality but on the uh, partial faces into and out of totality don't use a mirror mm -hmm. uh foster tells us avon lake ohio on or very near the center line will have a pictorial postmark great Good on you, and guys. Thomas has a link in the chat. It's the, the path through U.S. and Canada. So go click that link. People watching the recording, too bad for you. <laughs> uh, we do have two attendees with quest hands up, but I'm going to ask you to put your questions in the chat instead. And while you do that, I'm just going to say thank you, David um for Thanks. your presentation your th sharing your thorough collection and all this information about eclipses and all this interesting history that things happening around them yeah and sorry um, for taking so long but uh, uh i did have a lot to talk about yes in the interest of time we will not have the chat time tonight because people on the west coast need to go to bed <laughs> um so i'll say thank you again to longley auctions Please visit longlyauctions.com for your Canadian and worldwide collecting needs. And who knows, maybe you will find a little bit of the Eclipse philately there as well. So we will say good night and we, we hope everyone will be able to enjoy the Eclipse either if you're in the vicinity or through philately. Good night, everyone. <laughs>